All aboard for the transcribed premiere production, The Cruise of the Paul Parrot, that thrilling story of whaling days and buried treasure. Shortly after escaping from the ship's hold, you remember that Al Testi met his untimely end during a quarrel with Red Mulhooly, who later met up with Ezekiel Kipp, the man who years ago had sold the map and rights to the treasure on Galto Island to Ezra Grange. Red convinces Kip he'll need help to keep Grange and his party from taking claim to the mineral mine, and Kip agrees to join forces with Mulhooly. In the meantime, Grange, Captain Dalton, Dickon, and our young friends Sue Grange and Johnny Robbins have come upon the mineral deposit only to discover that someone had already been working it for quite some time. Then Dickon, with Paul Parrott atop his shoulder, fell in a brush-covered trench dug to keep any possible trespassers away from the mine. Almost immediately, a shot rang out, but upon close inspection of the thick brush from which direction the shot was fired, no trace of anyone was found. As it was growing dark, the party decided to delay further inspection of the surroundings until next day. It is night, and Grange, Captain Dalton, Sue, and Johnny are resting in their crude cabin that had been erected that day. Captain Dalton, someone is on this island, and whoever it is, he's working the mineral mine. You're right there, Mr. Grange. But lash me to a yardarm. For the life of me, I can't understand who the lover could be. Nor I. The only ones who possibly could know of this outside of ourselves are chained in the hold of the Paul Parrot. Oh, Testy and Red Mulhooly. That's right, Johnny. But, Ezra, how about the man who sold you the map? Ezekiel Kipp, he's dead. Aye, I'll Testy admitted that himself. Well, whoever is working the mine most likely was the one who fired the shot this afternoon. Mm, there's no doubt of that. I'm afraid we've run into trouble. If there's one man on this island, there may be a dozen for all I know. Maybe not. If there's more than one or two, they'd have nerve enough to come out in the open and find out what we're doing around the mine. Blow me down. There's some smart thinking, young lady, and you're most likely right. If it wasn't for the fact that the mine had been worked for some time, I'd say that perhaps Al Testy and Red Mulhooly had managed to escape from the boat. But whoever is working at the mine has been there for a long time. You're on the right course there, too, lad. I'm beginning to wonder if I didn't make a bad bargain when I bought the map and a share in the mineral. I don't think you did, sir. If the mine's worth trying to pirate, she's worth trying to protect. After all, half the loot belongs to Johnny here, and I mean to see that he gets his rightful lot. Blow me down if I don't. Captain Dalton's right, Ezra. And whoever it is, he's not going to keep us from getting our share of it either. Well, if you two kids can be that brave about it, I'm sure I can. But I don't mind admitting, Captain Dalton, I don't like it one little bit. Neither do I, sir. So I'm going to change matters just as soon as we can look over Galto Island tomorrow. We'll then soon know just who and how many sneaking lubbers there are to deal with. Listen, Captain Dalton, there's that noise again. Smoky mouth. Aye, aye, mateys, that's the volcano, all right. You know, Captain Dalton, I've noticed that it starts its rumbling pretty regular about every hour or so. Yeah, does a volcano have certain times when it rumbles? No, me hearty. Sometimes a volcano such as this one is quiet for months. Then again, it's liable to act up for days at a time. There's really no telling. Are there many of them in the world, Captain Dalton? Aye, lad, there are lots of them. As near as I can recollect, there's a place they call Salvador down in the Central American country that has more what you might call active volcanoes than any other part of the world. I wouldn't like to live there. But still, a lot of people live there all the time. I guess they're used to it, Mr. Grange. Blew me down. I can't see how anyone would ever be able to rightfully get used to them, as ornery as they are at times. Well, I suppose in Salvador, you simply have to become accustomed to them. Nowhere is one out of sight of at least one volcano, and usually there are several within range of vision. Aye, right you are, Mr. Grange. I don't know which is the hardest to get used to, volcanoes or sneaking rascals shooting at us from ambush. Mm, to be truthful, Mr. Grange, I'm more concerned over Smoky Mouth than I am about whoever's trying to keep us off the island. You know, Dalton, if we're all made rich from the mineral treasure, no one can say we made our fortunes easily. <laughs> Aye, and that's no yarn, sir. Now what? Come in. Oh. Captain Dalton. Captain Dalton, sir. The bloomin' rollers have jumped the brig. Ease down, matey. What's all the blowing about? And why didn't you take to the rigging, as I told you? I did that, sir. It strike me mainsails when I bought it. Or guess what, sir? This is no time to be guessing. Out with it. What's in the bloomin' wind, you loony sea salt? Mate Wainwright, sir. He was barnacle to the mast. Tied up, Dickon? Tied up he was. Tighter in a casket. He wasn't hurt, I hope. No, sound as a foremaster. But neither he nor Jameson could weigh anchor for the ropes what bound him. Well, you don't have to tell me. Those two bad ones, Al Testy and Mulhooly, have escaped, and they're on this island. You may rest assured. Oh, uh, you may later that. No, sir. Let me finish, sir, please. After I loose Wainwright and Jameson, then they tell me what happened. Al Testy and Red surprised them, tied them up, and then the two of them had it out between them on deck. But why, Dickon? Mm, that's beyond my navigating, miss. The two blubbers escaped from the old, but only one got away. Al Testy, I'll wager. You're wrong, sir. 
Red threw Altesti over the rails, so Wainwright told me. Got into a school of sharks. And I feel sorry for the sharks on a night like this. It's indigestion they'll all get her, I miss my guess. Then that means that Red Mahooly is on this island. And he's the one who shot at us today, I bet. Likely as not. But I'll say this. If that pirate-hearted swab is on this island tomorrow, I'll find him. And he'll not soon escape us this time. If he's on this island, he won't be leaving right away. And right now, he's most likely doing a little plotting. Come on, old man, Chip. Hurry along. We've got to strike now while there's yet time. But, Red, they'll be on guard. There's too many against us. That's, That's why what... we've got to strike right now. Tomorrow will be too late. The mine is my own, and I don't want them taking it away from me. That's what we're going to keep them from doing. But we can't do it by fighting them. We've got to outthink them. Well, what are you going to do? I've been spying on them ever since you took that shot at them through the bushes. I told you not to shoot. I had to. I had to. I wasn't going to let them get at the mine. Those minerals belong to me. Understand? To me. Don't forget you promised to split with me if I helped you get rid of Grange and his friends. That's right. That's right. Well, just don't forget it. I won't. I won't. Go ahead now and tell me what we're going to do. Wait. Hold up your hulk a minute. What's wrong? What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. I told you I'd been spying on them. And look down there. See? Cabins. Yeah, cabins. And that one to the right is where Grange and Dalton and those two young'uns are. So? So we're going down there. What? Why, you're crazy. You're crazy. I'm not going near them. They'll capture us. But I'll shoot at them. I can do that. Put that gun down. You're the crazy one, not me. Put that gun down or I'll take it away from you and lambast your cranium. All right, all right. My, but you have a blooming temper on you. Listen, here's what we're going to do. You see those two cabins down there? The one on the right is where Dalton and Grange and them two, the boy and the girl is. The other one is where the rest of the crew is bunked. So? Quit button in with that so. And wait till I finish is what I'm saying. The crew's been a-working hard putting up those shacks, and they're so tired they'll be snoring like a bunch of sea turtles. Yes, you're right. They just blew out their lamp. See? What'd I tell you? The lamp's still lit in the other cabin. Now's the time to strike. But what are we going to do? Well, I figure this way. We can't fight them. That's, there's too many of them. But if we can capture one of them... They won't dare fight us for fear we'd kill whoever we capture. But who are we going to capture and how are we going to do it? Leave that to me. We'll sneak around in back tonight. But, Ezra, why must we go back to the boat tonight? We'd like to stay with you and be of some help, sir. No, I'm not taking any chances. You two are going back to the boat. Mr. Grange is right, me hearties. There's going to be a bit of trouble tomorrow. We want neither of you getting hurt. Dickon, go to the other cabin. Get two of the crew. I'll need them to row Sue and Johnny here back aboard the Paul Parrot. Wainwright and Jameson are already aboard ship. Tell them to take good care of Sue and Johnny and stay on board. You and the two men come back. Aye, aye, sir. Then I'll be doing right off, sir. As soon as you raise the two men, come back and get the boy and girl here and carry out my orders. But, sir... We don't want to go back to the ship. Now, Sue, Captain Dalton is giving orders here and they must be carried out. Uh... Mr. Grange here is right, Miss Sue. You two bravens will be safer aboard the Paul Barrett. Well, here I go, Captain Dalton. I won't be long. Look, old man Kip, there's the one-legged sailor Dickon coming out of the cabin. When he passes this way, we'll grab him. Well, what good will that do? I'd rather capture one of the young'uns, but we can't be too choosy. Shh. Say, I could get a good beat on them from here. I could drop them in his tracks easy. If you don't put that gun down, I'll drop you in your tracks, you old buzzard. Quiet now. When he passes here, I'll grab him, and you tie this rag around his mouth to keep him quiet. Then we'll wrap this piece of paper around a rock and throw it at the door of the cabin. When they come out to get the note... They'll find we got Dickon. How so? There's nothing on the paper. No, but there will be before I get through. I'll tell them we got Dickon captive, and if they don't leave the island, that we'll kill the swan. Shh. Make ready now. Here he comes. I wonder what's keeping Dickon. He should be back by now with the other men. Maybe he had to wait till they got dressed. Well, you may be right about that. Huh. What was that? Hey. Sounds as though something hit against the door. I'll see what it is. Sue, you stay away from that door. Yeah, you better. No telling what's up. I'll see. Perhaps it was just a branch. There's a wind a brewing. Ah. No one out here. Perhaps you're right about it being a branch. Our nerves are a trifle jumpy. Captain Dalton, what's that just outside the door? Well, lad, I see nothing. I see it, Captain Dalton. It looks like a piece of paper. Oh, yeah, I see it. Oh, blow me down. That is what hit the door. There's a rock wrapped in it. What's on it, Captain Dalton? One minute, I'll find out. Hmm. It's a blooming note. Oh, what does it say? I'll bet it's a warning. Wait till I get it under this lamp. I'll read it. Huh, there's writing on it. It's 
not very good writing, but it's writing. You may lay to that. <gasps> Blow me down. Why, what's wrong? They've got Dickon. Great. Good Lord, no wonder he didn't get back. Dickon? Listen to this. It says, Mr. Grange, you and the rest of your swabs better get off my island. I will hold your peg-legged sailor to make sure you do. If you don't get off right away, I will kill your sailor. And it's signed, Ezekiel Kip. Kip? Mm. Why, I thought he was dead. Maybe he's dead, maybe he ain't. But whoever wrote it means business and there's no time to lose. Captain Dalton, what are you going to do? I'm going to get the rest of the men and we're going to find where they've taken Dickon. Tomorrow may be too late. Now, wait a minute. Well, what's wrong? Listen, you hear that? It's that volcano again. But that's the loudest it's been since we landed here. Look, there's fire coming out of it. Bloomby, don't. Smoke him out. It's erupting. Ah, one man is guilty. Ah. Yeah, Polly's right. We've got to get off this island. Lash me to a mast. I'm stuck for once. We've got to get off this island. And yet we've got to rescue Dickon. Mr. Graves, I'm befuddled. I don't know what to do. I know what we'll do. We'll stay and rescue Dickon. There's a mighty tough corner for Captain Dalton, Johnny, and Sue to be in, all right. With Dickon in the hands of Red Mulhooly and Ezekiel Kipp and the volcano old Smoky Mouth running rampant, what to do? Will our friends be forced to get off the island to save themselves, or will they be able to find and rescue Dickon before any damage is done? Be sure to listen for the next exciting adventure in the cruise of the Paul Parrot. Your Paul Parrot announcer is Dave Ward. <laughs> 